You shall not spend extra money on things you don't really want to. Hello everybody, today we're going to talk about how I stopped spending money on things I didn't want it to. So it all started last year when I heard about the no spend challenge. If you didn't know, the no spend challenge is basically a challenge where you stop buying things you don't need and only focus on necessities. So it can vary for many people, but usually you only spend money on food, medicine, bills, uh, uh, such as petrol if you have a car and that sort of stuff. This challenge can be pursued towards many goals. Some people do it to get out of debt, some people do it to save some money for a house, a car, a trip, and some people do it to get out of bad consumer habits. So it's really up to you why you want to do it and I think it's really important to have a goal and to have uh, really something in mind. Why I wanted to do the Dose Pen Challenge this year? Uh, well, it all started when I decluttered my wardrobe and all my bedroom to be honest because when I decluttered I realized how much stuff I bought and didn't I uh, used as much as I thought I would, so um, it's a bit of a weird waste of money because you buy things but then you don't enjoy them as much as you should or you think you could. And I also accumulated a lot of stuff. And at the same time I was just starting my last internship and so I wanted to save as much money as possible because after that I would be looking for my first job and I didn't know where that would be and so I just wanted to save money while <laughs> I had it and basically be prepared for adult life. I wanted to try if I could live more simply and spend less money. Uh, it was also a way to reassure me for my future self and see how resilient I was, um, to see how much money I needed to live comfortably uh, and to be more free in my decisions and to be less worried about money. It was just a way to grow as a consumer and to be more mindful and thoughtful about my spendings. I'm just going to describe a little bit my situation because obviously a no spend challenge is really depending on your situation. So I'm very lucky uh, I still live in my parents house, house family house, uh, so I have no bill, I have no electricity, no water to pay, no food, nothing to pay basically and that's why I wanted to do a no spend even more because I'm in such a lucky position that there's no reason for me not to save as much as I could. I started this not being too much of a shopping addict. I previously I bought quite a lot of clothes and even party wear. I buy much less of it and <laughs> still have a bit of a thing with books right now, trying to slow this down, but I'm not coming from a problematic consumer habits so that was a bit easier on me. Also my parents are quite frugal and they have a huge uh, public slash shared um, philosophy. We go uh, quite a lot to the public library and to public facilities uh, so that's that as well. So what were my rules for this year of No Spend Challenge? First of all, I was allowed restaurants with friends because I'm such a granny, I don't go out that often and because I was still a student, uh, sometimes it's easier uh, to meet friends in Saint-Jean Paris. I was allowed restaurants reasonably, so that's not once a week, but because I have different group of friends as you do, I allowed myself restaurants with each group of friends basically. I allow myself one book a month if it was not available in libraries because that would be a bit silly. I was more strict for clothes and objects. I said no new clothes unless it's very specific and I wait a few days slash weeks to buy it and no cute objects because I have a thing for pins and prints and arty things made from local makers. 
<laughs> and so I said no to this kind of things because this stuff accumulates like nothing else. My last rule is that I'm allowed to support uh, charities and uh, independent makers which work in uh, things that I really value. So, for example, sustain sustainability and solidarity because I, it's something really important and close to my heart and I still wanted to do that reasonably, of course. So, a few preparations hack that I did before starting my No Spend Challenge was to um, cancel all my uh, newsletter subscriptions because that is a trap to spend money and I also unfollowed Instagram accounts that push me to buy things all these beautiful fashion bloggers that are creative but push you to spend money on new clothes <laughs> so I unfollowed uh, them on top of that I was more aware of my surrounding. I was very lucky that in that year I was working in an environment where there were fewer advertisements and fewer shops around because when I used to work in Paris it was much harder to not spend money because you have so many shops around <laughs> and after work you always do a little bit of window shopping which is just a uh, very risky thing to do. <laughs> so I was in a um, city where there were fewer shops and so it was much easier for me not to buy things after work during the week when you're tired. That's all the things to keep in mind for my no spend. So now, ladies and gentlemen, my results! I'm only gonna talk about things I didn't allow myself Bye. But unsurprisingly, my first spending category was books. I bought 9 out of 10 months. I'm quite happy with that. It's mainly a new books, so library didn't have them. And I pretty much love them all, so that's alright. Second spending category is a Christmas and birthday gift. For friends so that was something allowed because I don't want to lose my friend just because I want to save money that's not something we do during our no spend if my memory is correct I quite use secondhand and uh, homemade stuff so that's the thing you can include into your no spend if you want to do uh, frugal gifts but still very creative and uh, loving gifts for friends. So my third spending category is subscription. I still paid for three patrons membership this year uh, and my student Spotify which is only five a month but I really listen to music and podcasts on there and I love being ad free. And I also paid for uh, Netflix during the first lockdown because well that wasn't planned and that was a bit tricky too go through so Netflix it was. I can sell my subscription during summer. And I also subscribe to three magazines, two of which I love and a third one uh, which was a new one um, so I wanted to support it but I'm not the biggest fan of it so I won't renew my subscription to it. Then on to clothes! So surprisingly and very happily I didn't spend that much money on clothes this year. I only bought one t-shirt from a friend, which I love because vegetables are my life right now. <laughs> a long coat, uh, which I wanted to buy for five years. Uh, this kind of coat, like really long and uh, dark navy and only wool. Uh, this is something I've been uh, looking for years. And then cute trousers to wear to work, but also not to work and they are very floaty so I feel great in them. I also bought uh, this summer a very light linen uh, top because it was so hot. Uh, we have uh, more and more heat waves and so I wasn't suitably <laughs> equipped to deal with this weather. And lastly I bought three pair of shoes, uh, one in panic uh, in spring because my trusty uh, boots were wearing off so I panically bought one pair of boots but then uh, in autumn I bought two other pair of shoes 
one to wear in, during the weekend. It's Doc Martin, so it will basically last me my lifetime. And the other one are a really great high quality pair of uh, work boots so that I can be very elegant at work. <laughs> I'm really happy with those purchases. They all aligned with my rules and my values and uh, they were really thought through, so that was great. Also, in terms of objects, I didn't buy any uh, except for kitchenware this autumn, but because I'm gonna move out, this doesn't count. Finally, my last category is art and museums and trips. I only did one trip this year to see uh, one of my best friends in Lyon and I did bought a print but it was from my best friend and again vegetables <laughs> and I did buy myself a tattoo which I'm really happy about and uh, was really thought through as well. So in conclusion I'm really happy with my no spend. It did uh, help me grow as a consumer and so now I feel more stepped back and more confident in my skills to make decisions around my pitches and so it really helped me out. I highly recommend it to people if you are interested in this kind of challenge. It really helps you deconstruct all these consumer habits and all those nasty reflex we have when it comes to buying. As you can see it was kind of a bit of soft no spend um, but I'm really happy with it. Uh, I still have to be careful around books and I was lucky I didn't go to London to my best friend there because when I go to London I always buy so many books because they are cheaper obviously than uh, to cheap them to France. Other than books I'm really happy I didn't buy many clothes or trinkets. As you can see it was a really cool and great experience for me. I'm still continuing it because it's so um, aligned with my value that it's not that much of an effort and so I keep asking myself questions before I want to buy a new thing and so yeah I'm really glad I did it and I highly recommend to people who are curious about it definitely try it out if you need more information and help I will link down there and also on the card above the fairly local family channel YouTube channel because she has loads of video on the topic. She is the one who inspired me to do an spend. I will also link Lina Norm's video about an spend. Um, I'm <laughs> kind of a bit of a geek uh, toward no spend and budget things. So I hope this video inspired you. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. I will be very happy to answer any of your questions. If you're new around here, please subscribe hit that bell and follow me on Instagram for more fun. I wish you a great day and I will see you very soon. Bye!